Hey Explorers! Today on Clayton's Exploration Station, we have a very special episode where we're going to be observing isopods in a home vivarium with our special guest and isopod expert, Soap. During this video, Soph is going to be teaching us all about these fascinating creatures that you may mistake for insects, but are actually crustaceans belonging to the animal family. Other crustaceans you may be familiar with are crabs and shrimp. Soph, thank you for giving us an opportunity to observe isopods today. What first interested you in having isopods for a pet? I was watching a snake video because I really like snakes and Snake Discovery was starting to talk about how um, isopods are a good animal to help you clean with other animals. There's multiple different types. There are 14 inches ones in the sea, and the ones that I keep are land animals, so they aren't 14 inches, and I don't need a giant tank for isopods. What type of isopods do you have? I have a mix of powder blue, powder orange, powder white, and some hybrids, also known as the poppy mix. How many isopods did you start with? I started with four or five isopods. It's my understanding that under the right conditions, isopods can be quite prolific. Have any of your isopods had babies yet? Yes, one of my isopods have had babies recently. When I got them, I checked on all the bellies and one of them was pregnant. That means I waited three to four weeks to see the babies to hatch. I could see um, the isopod's belly. I would see that it has a yellow pouch, a couple white spots, and then I knew it was pregnant. And what happens when the babies hatch? They hatch in the mom's pouch and then the mom keeps them in a pouch for one extra week just to make sure that they're fully developed and takes care of them until they're old enough to live on their own. The isopods and springtails were easy to confuse. When the isopods are babies, they're so tiny that you can barely even see them. Have they started changing colors? They change a different color after a week, and that is their color for the rest of their life. And also my favorite isopod is named Bob. Science! So how many baby isopods do you have now? It would be hard to tell because isopods could have up to a hundred babies at a time. But I would probably say now around a hundred or so. How quickly do the baby isopods grow to be the size of their parents? I would probably say two months or so. Mostly because some predators like eating isopods, so I'm guessing they want to make them as big as possible because predators only like the weak and small. If they can have so many babies at once, is there room for all of them in your vivarium? You can separate them into different bins or containers, or you can just keep them all together and put them in a bigger container. Tell us about your vivarium. What do you have in it to make it a good home for your isopods? I put in moss because they like eating moss. It gives them nutrients and it's a good hiding spot for the baby isopods. They're nocturnal, so I gave them a couple hides. I give them leaves that they like eating. I give them snake skin because it's good calcium. I spray them every other day with a little bit of calcium in the water. What is a hide? A hide is a tiny piece of bark that they like hiding under. They don't eat it, they just like hiding on it. There's different rough spots so it helps them shed and it's a good hiding spot and it's darker than the actual dirt. What do you keep your isopods in? I keep them in a container that is plastic. You could also keep them in glass, but I would not recommend that if you're carrying it and it slips. Plastic is easier to contain. They can't climb plastic even though they try once in a while. When you get bark as a hide, you don't want it to be too tall so they can climb the top and reach the top of the container and run away. What kind of food do isopods eat? They eat multiple different things. I got this um, thing where you just add water and it's this tiny little jelly form and it's food for them. I believe it has calcium, 
um, some grass, some lettuce in it, and it smells a lot and is not a good smell in my opinion when you make it. I add calcium to their water because the calcium is good for them, for the energy that they have. You also want to make sure for your container that it has enough space for them to run around and play. Is the calcium good for their shells? Yes, to make their shells harder. With some species of isopods, you want to give them a bigger container than you want because some of the males fight to the death. <laughs> For the ones that fight, you might want to give them calcium so it's um, a better protection for them. You keep isopods as pets, but what other things are powder orange isopods useful for? They're useful for bioactive containers or environments. When you have a lizard or a snake, instead of you picking up the animal's poop, they eat the waste a springtail helps with cleaning up the environment just like isopods and the springtails eat the isopods waste. The springtails turn it into dirt again. The animals do all the work for you. That sounds like a pretty clean environment. That's why it's called a bioactive environment. Mm -hmm. What kind of vivarium works best for isopods? Moist habitats are good for land isopods. You want the dirt that can hold water but doesn't drip, but also you don't want it to dry. The moss helps because they like eating it and it holds lots of moisture. Cocoa fiber helps a lot. It's easier to dig and it helps for the dirt to not mold. Why is it important to have a moist habitat for isopods? You need to have the habitat moist for your isopods because they have a membrane behind the gills that needs to keep moist to help them breathe. I thought only underwater creatures had gills, so how do they breathe? They have gills and lungs. As a story, let's say, a sea isopod is like, I want to see the land because no one in my species has lived on land. And since that point of time, they still have gills, but they've lived on land. We talked about what isopods eat. We talked about where they live. We talked about why they're really great for the environment around them. What other awesome things do you love about isopods? Isopods are good for the environment. I also liked the isopods because I learned something new and I like having animals and researching and learning about animals that not a lot of people know. Have you found any really great places for people to go and learn about isopods? Snake discovery really helps. They taught me a lot about animals that not a lot of people liked, like snakes, lizards, isopods, and they helped a lot with me learning animals and having isopods now. So you mentioned you have a favorite isopod. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your favorite? Bob is my favorite isopod, mostly because he was the first isopod that I saw and he was different from the rest. The other ones had spots and a couple stripes. That one was just straight up half and half. Does he juggle or do anything <laughs> like that? No, he likes running away and jumping off of things and Twice he has escaped, but I've caught him twice. Okay, so he's a parkour isopod. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Soph, thank you so much for coming in and telling us about your isopods. Welcome. For more fun animal facts, subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media. And check out Snake Discovery for more information about isopods and different animals. Stay, Stay curious, curious, explorers. Clayton's Exploration Station.